Believe it or not, in 2022, whining creams are still a huge reality. What is considered miserable and unacceptable in the West is unfortunately a well-accepted form of marketing in areas of the world such as Asia, Africa or the Middle East. While the movement of Black Lives Matter enhanced the beauty in every skin color, some regions of the world are still equating beauty with whiteness. A quick research on Google would easily show the infinite amount of products on the market that promise people, but in particular women, to bleach their skin and to make it lighter. Those products are not only extremely common around the world, but they actually represent a huge part of some companies' profit. What I believe to be an extremely harmful, unacceptable and immoral practice is actually an over 8 billion market around the world. This practice is not only unethical and disappointing, but it also enhances a problem that we should fight instead. Indeed, instead of helping people to accept and embrace their skin color, companies offer a solution to fix something that shouldn't even be considered a problem in the first place. So then why? Why is this still a reality and companies are so slow and reluctant to act? Those products meet a huge demand and companies are taking advantage of it. And unfortunately, the demand is led by some beauty standards of these regions of the world, which are still ingrained. The same company that sells a whitening or bleaching lotion in Asia would not offer that product in the US or in Europe. This is because they follow a specific market strategy which changes region by region depending on the consumer's wants and needs. So, instead of fighting a problem that is deeply rooted in a society, they simply profit from it. When companies were asked to act, they took a very slow approach. Instead of pulling out their products, they started to take small updates. They are acting very slow, making few changes at a time. An example is clearly Fair and Lovely, which is now Glow and Lovely, but still has its own name on the product. This means that they are no longer using the word fair, but they simply replaced it with the word glow. Their formula and their purpose is the exact same, but they're just trying to avoid criticism. But is this enough? I might argue that it's not. So what are some implications for brands such as Nivea, L'Oreal or Unilever? Well, they simply want to profit out of demand. And if they stop selling those products without using a slow exit strategy, they would simply lose too much profit. The implication is the fact that if they pulled out of this market, their revenues would simply drastically fall. They will lose these customers, and these customers themselves would simply buy the same product from another client. While doing this, though, companies find themselves in the middle of two fires. On one side, they have whole regions in Asia, Middle East and Africa demanding for these products. And as this practice is rooted into their beauty standards, they are willing to pay a lot of money for it. On the other side, though, they have people in the West protesting for Black Lives Matter and body positivity. Indeed, this happens while Black Lives Matter is trying to fight racism and colorism, the discrimination against individuals with a dark skin tone. At the same time, body positivity movements all around Europe and in the US are trying to push people to accept themselves no matter how they look. But what's important to observe is that they are doing both simply in two different parts of the world. And that's on global strategy. A company's approach is defined by the area of the world where it's applied. This means that big companies pay very little attention when it comes to be ethical, as long as the product they offer is accepted where they sell it, or as long as they can profit out of it. When Nivea L'Oreal say that it's hard to make updates because of manufacturing or product registration, they perfectly know that it's not the whole truth. If they exited this market, demand would still be there they simply wouldn't take advantage of it. And is this somehow ethically correct? Of course not. So let's try to give a thoughtful recommendation to a company like Nivea. The company should act responsibly, understanding that these vulnerable countries need to be educated on the topic. This means that Nivea, instead of supporting this industry, should consider acting differently and taking action. After softly and slowly exiting the market of wine and cream, Nivea should focus on creating a whole new market where skin colors are embraced and accepted. Of course, it would take a little bit of time, but Nivea could be the pioneer of an ethical campaign that could actually succeed. Being the first one in business is risky, but it can also bring high results and profits. Thank you for listening.